Yeah. All right. Well, it's 731. Uh, let's start the meeting. We have a quorum. Um, this is I am Christine Dashler, the chair of the Arlington Finance Committee. I want to thank you all for coming. Um, it's exciting to have an in-person meeting for the first time. Well, we had an in-person hybrid meeting last June, but we really haven't had a whole official formal in-person meeting for a couple of years. So this is exciting. Um, and again, I appreciate everyone coming out. Uh, even though it's COVID is still circulating, I thought it would be a good team building um, uh, attempt to meet in person. Um, and we have a lot of new people. Um, so I think we should, I think this is the largest incoming class of new people, certainly since I've been on the committee. Um, and I think that's exciting. Uh, lots of new blood, different perspectives, different experiences, and certainly a lot of different levels, kinds of skills that everyone is bringing to the committee. So I think we should just go around the room and just, you know, identify ourselves by name and whether you're a new person or someone who's been on the committee for a while and also the precinct that you are representing. And I guess I'll start and we'll go towards my, my right. Um, again, I'm Christine Deschler. I've been on the committee for, I think, around 14 years, and I represent this team. Alan? Uh, Alan Jones, I've been on the committee for a long time. <laughs> long time. Uh, and uh, my main function here is I do the spreadsheets and end up in the Finance Committee report. So like everything that we do comes to me. My name's Charlie Foskett. I represent Precinct 10, and I've been here a while also. A while. <laughs> uh, Shane Wendell, Precinct 2. I think this will be my fourth fourth budget. Uh, my name is Jordan Remy, Precinct 1, and uh, I'm new to the FinCom. Uh, Jennifer Seas, Precinct 3, and new to the FinCom. Hi, I'm David McKenna, Precinct 21. <clears throat> I feel like I've been on this committee since Eisenhower, but I'm a former town employee. Sophie Meliazzo, uh, I'm an at-large member, so this year I'm representing Precinct 4. Uh, this is my second year. I'm Dean Carmen. I've been on the committee, I think, since 2006. I took a two-year hiatus in the middle, or later, and then... Why? I just don't know. <laughs> Time off. PTO. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you. I'm Rebecca Duncan. I'm from Precinct 7, and this is my first year. My name is John Griffin. Uh, this is my first year, and I am an at-large member. Um, so I'm Annie LaCourt. I believe I've been on the Finance Committee for four years, which is an upgrade from being on the select board. Then I worked very hard to go from that lower position to the higher one. Um, and I represent Precinct 13 now, I think. Well, tough act to follow. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm Daryl Harmer from Precinct 12. I've been on since 2016, so I guess this is year seven. And I'm Topher Hyam. Uh, it's my first year, and I represent Precinct 15. I'm Tara Bradley. I'm the executive secretary, and this is my second budget season. And we have as our guinea pig, <laughs> Al Tosti. Say hi, Al. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Al. No. Um, Al Tosti, representing Precinct 17, and I've been on for a number of years. <laughs> um, this is uh, what you're seeing here is a, a, a sharp upgrade from prior attempts to have a hybrid meeting. So Al is our guinea pig. Thank you, Al, for helping us test out this equipment, which really looks exciting. Um, so it's it's good. Thank you, Tara, for helping to set it up and, and get it all uh, up and running. Okay, um, no problem. Works rather well. That's okay. good news. Um, and Josh Lobel just came in. Well, I'm swimming late. <laughs> we were just finishing introductions, Josh. You could just introduce yourself oh, and sure. who um, you represent. I'm Josh Lobel. I've lived in Arlington for many, many years. I'm on a town meeting. I have a background in um, IT and more recently I've been working in the financial area of IT. 
and I'm excited to join. Welcome all of you new people, particularly. everyone, but the new people particularly. I want to give a big shout out to um, what uh, became our training committee uh, for our, our new people, and that would be Annie and Al and Daryl. I think Tara, you worked on it. Shane, did you work on the training? Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Yes. Yes. It was. It was. Uh, uh, Very helpful. That's good to hear. I. I. There was the that group I just named put a lot of effort into what I thought was a really really nice uh, training program that we recorded, so it's available for future new members and uh, something we can build upon. And I think uh, that was a really big step forward and. And sort of our organizational structure and operation. Um, so I really appreciate um, that work. And I also want to give a shout out to the communications working group, which is Charlie and Shane, who um, greatly assisted me in recruiting new members. Um, I think I think it's fair to say that we have perhaps the most robust and extensive and inclusive recruiting campaign for new members that maybe have ever happened on the finance committee. Um, and it was, uh, uh, something, again, something we can build on. Those contacts, those organizations that we reached out to will be helpful in future years. And I want to thank Charlie and Shane for taking uh, a big uh, role in that. Uh, and I greatly appreciate uh, their efforts. Um, so this is a good segue to um, a couple of other things. Uh, when I was talking to members, the members who stepped down and talking to people uh, who uh, indicated some interest in serving on the finance committee, it became apparent to me that in order to recruit and retain really good quality finance committee members, uh, we have to be more mindful of um, what we're asking of people in terms of their time commitments. Um, and the, the, the reality is being on the finance committee is a huge time commitment. There's no avoiding that. Um, however, I began to think whether we can at least try to be more efficient uh, and productive in our time um, to lessen the load on people. So I asked um, our uh, policies and procedures working group, which is Al Jones, Annie of the Court, Daryl Harmer, and Shane Blundell to um, do an analysis of our operations and maybe come up with some ideas to build in some efficiencies um, to them. And what they came up with, they worked very diligently throughout the summer and into the fall. And what they came up with was a report that I think you all received. Um, and I hope you had an opportunity to look at, at, at the recommendations. And I, at this point, I'd just like to ask that group um, you know, to talk a little bit about what they did and, and so generally what you came up with. Who wants to go first? Gosh, all right. Um, so we really spent a little time brainstorming um, where did we feel like the bottlenecks in the process were and what were the things that kind of hung us up. And um, also what made it difficult for someone to efficiently process their budget. And we came up with a handful of recommendations. Um, and I'm not looking at the list right now, but uh, one of those recommendations was that we um, uh, provide you all with a little bit more guidance about the kinds of questions you want to ask and the kinds of questions the committee is going to ask you when you come back to present a budget so that everything gets covered in the review with your department head so that you don't get surprised by questions we ask you and then have to do another round with the department head and delay the vote. Um, another thing that we suggested was that, you know, we, we developed a process last year of allowing the committee to review the budget in advance and ask questions of one another and make sure that, like, if it's not your budget, but you have a particular question you want to be sure gets answered. And we did that all together in person, and we thought that, that might be a better offline 
exercise where everyone will receive a deadline, I believe it's in the memo, of a deadline to have reviewed the budgets that you are not covering with the department head, see what questions you might have and get it to the person who is reviewing that budget so they can ask that question to the department head. Um, and then similarly, we usually spend an evening doing a warrant review where we all walk through the warrant together and we think that a subcommittee might be able to more effectively walk through the warrant. What we're looking for is, are there any articles other than our standard boilerplate articles that we as a committee need to take a position on? That is, do they involve money either now or in the future? And therefore, should we put it on our agenda to review it and invite someone for a hearing? And so we recommended to Chris that Chris and maybe one other member do that review and present us with the list. And that then everybody will get an offline option to simply say, can you add this article as well? Because I, I personally think we ought to review it. So we're hoping to push some of that um, kind of bureaucratic stuff offline. Um, what would the other things we recommend? And that is the, um, we're gonna be, as, as you might know a lot of times um, departments come in, give presentations, hand out stuff. Um, they provide at the meeting. Yeah. So no one has had a chance to even look at what they're presenting. So um, we were going to be requiring that any materials be given um, to the FinCom at least 48 hours before the meeting so that we will have a chance to look through and. <coughs> Intensive formulaic questions, but at least not be looking at the their presentation for the first time when they're walking through it. So that I think sort of in a nutshell, we didn't find any sort of massive silver bullet massive kind of bullet. things. Um, but um, you know, we're hoping that um, by sort of fine-tuning some of our processes that we can um, squeeze out some efficiencies and um, just maybe get the time a little more of the both the time of the meetings themselves and the time span uh, over the weeks that we do meet um, we can keep that a little more contained so we'll see if any of this helps um but i believe the goal was to see if we can uh reduce the number of weeks that we're meeting and therefore uh be very compact and concise about the budget we review every night and one of the biggest things that I think everyone can do to help with that is if you have not yet talked to the department head, do it now. So that we don't have nights when you're asking whether or not anybody's got a budget to present, and the answer is no, that we got one. And therefore, we don't go out of business to do it. Now we're done that night, but we'll have to come back one more night in the season. So um, uh, I've already taken the liberty of contacting all of my department heads, so I'm going to set that up. Good example here, which is not likely. So. <laughs> I think many of their recommendations were really very thoughtful and sound, and, and I want to test them out this year. If they improve the meetings and their operation, great. If they don't, then we can we can drop them. Um, so uh, one of the recommendations was to um, urge everyone not just to look at their own budgets, but that have been assigned to them, but the entire town manager's proposed budget. And if you see, if you have questions, um, direct your questions to whoever is responsible for that budget. Oof. Early, like right now, within the next few days, the next week, take a look at the entire budget. Um, what we, it, we want, the budget subcommittees to have all of the questions that they need to ask before they meet their, their department head. So if you have the question of, for example, what is that $15,000 line item called other purchased, other, what's it called? Otherwise purchased items in the natural resources budget. You ask Shane and, and Jennifer and Jordan that before they meet with the um, with the DPW department heads so that they can get that information. So when they present that budget and you have that question, they have that answer for you. Um, so I really urge you to, to do that as soon as possible. And as Annie says, meet with your department heads as soon as possible so that we can really get these budgets done. And I, I, I have asked and I'll ask my vice chairs again 
to start nudging people, um, just reminding them, figuring out when you'll be able to present your budgets, helping you if you have any questions. And that's the other thing too, is that the vice chairs are here to help. And so am I, if, if you have a, if you, have a question, if you have a problem, send them an email, give them a call, give me a call, send me an email, rather than, rather than just wait and let it fester and then you present and then we can't finish that budget. What we wanna do is reduce the back and forth that used to happen sometimes where somebody would present a budget and we would have this, this list of questions that they couldn't answer. So they would have to go back to the department head to get those answers and then, then present it, find a place in our schedule to, to finalize that budget. So we wanna avoid that. Um, I also like the idea of a warrant review officer and I have asked Al Tosti to be that person. So what, um, what we're gonna ask Alan to do is to prepare uh, a list of those warrant articles that we should hear and report on to town meeting um, and come to the, the full committee with that list. What we'll then debate is not, uh, we'll debate if there are any other warrant articles that somebody wants to conduct a hearing on, or if someone feels like Alan has something in his list that we shouldn't. We'll only focus on that instead of going through the warrant like we used to do one article after another, after another, and somebody would say, yes, I want to hear him. And then we would debate that. So um, hopefully, I think that will take a, say, a chunk of our, our time doing that. Um, I thought the questions that you came up with were, were really spot on. Um, and I think that would be helpful for not just new members, but for even older members who have been doing this to, to, to refresh types of information, questions that you should know about your budget. Um, any questions or comments about that? And I also will, um, although I might have uh, allow some leeway for um, the town manager or other town officials who come to us in terms of getting their materials 48 hours before. When it comes to warrant proponents, I'm really going to, to be strict about making sure that they get their materials to us within at least 48 hours before. So that as Annie says, and as Daryl says, we get an opportunity to really look at it. And so we have thoughtful questions to ask um, when, when it's time for them to present. And so we can vote on it right away rather than say, well, you know, we still have to do some thinking about this. We have to look, review that. We haven't had an opportunity to really get into this. So, um, but again, that puts the onus on us to do our homework before these meetings. So um, the goal is to maybe cut down on the number or length of meetings, but that puts the onus on you to do your homework before the meetings. Um, any questions or comments? Anything about what we've been talking about? Okay. Um, other reports of our working groups. Um, anything else that the policies and procedures working group wants to report on? I think so. I think this was the big push. Communication. Charlie, Shane, you had some PR Shane, efforts. Shane, well, then I'll take a crack at it. Um, thanks, Christine. Um, so Christine is very modest. I think she expended the most shoe leather, I think, in recruiting, but Charlie and I did our, did our part. So um, so our working group um, overall goal, in addition to recruitment, is just raise visibility in the committee in town. So um, you know, we, we came on, actually, Charlie and I came on when we sort of the communications working group sort of left and larger, obviously, um, vacancies and vacancies on the committee. So one of our first tasks was building a job posting, uh, which is actually still up on the website, although now working with Tara to refine it. So we're very excited that it's only one vacancy down from, I think, I don't know, a lot more. 
So we're very proud of that. Um, so in the second project that Charlie and I worked on with Christine was a, a little op-ed. So uh, just basically, so your Arlington, for those of you who can read your uh, we, uh, we developed a little op-ed just basically saying, hey, here's who the finance committee is. Here's why we're, here's why we're an important little part of town government and here's who makes up the town, uh, the finance committee. So uh, that's still up there. I think it's gotten some good, good views on it. Uh, if I do say so myself, so. Um, and then sort of for, so for the future, um, obviously in addition to the budget work here, I think we're thinking about, you know, whether we can do similar projects like that, whether it's arlington.com or other sort of local outlets, to sort of again, maybe get into a little, dig into a little more of like sort of the specific work in the community versus the general work. So, uh, so basically that's like sort of our, our, our vision for the future uh, and also where we've been. So. We're small, small but mighty. So if you're at all interested in it, just let me know. Uh, that's uh, that's the working group. Yeah, I encourage anyone who's interested in, in working on communications to talk to Charlie and Shane, as well as working on policies and procedures as well, or any of the other working groups we have. Um, we have the IT working group, right? That's still active for. Yeah, we haven't, um, because we're all also on policies and procedures, um, we haven't done a whole lot of digging in, but I think that sort of next up for us is to look at, you know, how might we best preserve uh, or create some longitudinal data for the committee's reference. Um, you know, what is the headcount growth in or ebb over time? Maybe a little bit more detail than just a, a one number. Um, things like that that would help us to understand sort of where we've been, where we're going, uh, the big picture of um, how the town is expanding its funds and where the money's coming from. Um, that's probably something that we will tackle in the spring after we're done with this season um, and then come back with some recommendations for everybody about what we think they ought to be looking at. Um, that isn't to say that those data sources don't exist. There's a lot of data on the town website and on the state website, as we said, the folks in, in the training session. There's a lot of stuff available. We just don't feel like it's really pulled together or easy to like do a five-year look back or a forward projection um, when you're considering changes in the budget. I'm here. I, I just uh, I think just the other day I saw an announcement from the uh, D, DLS or VLS, whatever the mm -hmm. local Department of Local Services. Mm -hmm. They have a new um, portal. Comparing towns, I, don't, I haven't seen it got into it, but it's supposed to be yeah. easier to use. Yeah, if that's true, that would be a big boost. Yeah, I mean, because right now you can look at your town, but you can't easily no, compare they, it to they another said town. You can look at all 351 towns, pick them out, and yeah. do also some manipulation. But I, I didn't have time to get in there, but it's available. Well, that would be huge if we could view the detailed comparison of the town managers 12, which may change. <coughs> When we did that um, police report, um, I did the comparison using DLS data, and it was a pain to download everything and then weed out the stuff I didn't want. So if they would mm -hmm. improve that, that would be really nice. Um, Al, Al Tosti, you were yeah. involved, you were involved in the operations. You are involved in the operations working group, correct? You did the solid waste analysis? Oh, right. Yes. Who else was on that committee working group? Uh, Dave McKenna, Peter Howard, Peter Dean Howard. Carmen, yeah. and of course, Peter was on it, but he's not there anymore. Okay. So the operations working group, um, I refer to it as the deep dive working group. Uh, we started, as Daryl mentioned, uh, two years ago, we did the police department, or three years ago. Yeah, three years ago. We did um, a deep dive of um, the police department, its budget, its operations, essentially a review to figure out um, were there any issues of a financial nature that we should know about. Um, and um, 
we produced a report that I think is still on our website. Um, I'm not sure. Um, but it, um, um, it was a pretty thorough review. Uh, and after that, then Al and Dave and Peter did the solid waste analysis, correct? And that was provided to town meeting last year, I think, with our report. Um, yes. I, I don't know, was there any discussion about another area to, to, to dive into, Al, Dave? Um, you know, not, not that was, uh, that seemed, you know, in, uh, imminently necessary. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it, it, it's hard to pull everything together over the summer and fall. Um, we got absolutely no feedback on the uh, recycling trash disposal, um, which is a bit disappointing. Um, I suppose it was okay from an educational point of view um, on that, but you know we don't have anything on our plate right now. Well, we might um, reconstitute that group at some point, maybe towards the end of the budget season and, and see if there are other uh, areas we might wanna uh, dive into. Uh, so that's another opportunity for people to, to join and, and do some, some additional work for the committee. And we are joined today, right now, by Carolyn White. Hi, Carolyn. Hello, I'm Carolyn. Hello, Carolyn was on the committee and then she stepped down from the committee meeting, now she's back on. And I have three class left. Great, <laughs> great. Um, a few other updates. Um, uh, the Long Range Planning Committee has been meeting. Annie, Alan, do you want to say anything about what's been going on in the Long Range Planning Committee? Um, well, the big discussion of the Long Range Planning Committee, aside from the general updates on the five year plan that we'll hear you know, when the town manager is here, is the uh, encroaching need for an override of some size at some time. And the questions are always how big should it be? How many years can we promise it'll last? Is it a two-year override, a three-year override, a four-year override, or whatever? Uh, and then some new questions came up about sort of policies about um, where should, for example, in, in school salaries, you know, where should we be? Where, what should our target be? To be at average or above average or below average? You, you need that as another dimension. And some uh, policies about how we go forward, do we deal with anything with the structural deficit? But the big questions for the select board are when do we have an override and how big should it be? Because if we, you know, in some cases it may be too big to, for anyone to swallow, in other cases it's too small to be effective. So I guess that's the major topics of long range planning. And, and for those who don't know, long range planning is sort of, is the town manager, the select board, the school superintendent, and a number of representatives, the treasurer, the comptroller get together and sort of talk about the big picture things and come up with guidance that goes into a five-year plan, which is what drives us in the budget. Yeah, and just to note, it's it's select board, us, the school committee, all with representation that does not represent a quorum, so that those boards don't have to post this separately and worry about votes and minutes for their own boards. So um, it is publicly posted, but none of us have a quorum at that meeting. Um, Hence, the fact that we have three finance committee members instead of the whole committee. And there's a place in SharePoint where I try to copy all of the materials, the yeah. long range plan, and some of the discussions into that for anyone to look at. Um, for what it's worth, the debate about timing is is it this June or is it next June? And the debate about the size is a question of how long do we commit for that override to last three years, four years, or five years? Because that changes the number that you have to ask. Um, and then there's always a question of what's in and what's out of the commitments that we make. So we set ourselves some rules and say to the, the public, these are the things we're committing to, budgets won't increase more than this, we won't come back to you for this many years, et cetera. Um, and then also, are there other adjustments to the budget we need to make that would change the overall number? Do we need increase in funding in any departments of color, salary competitiveness, or expenses that are increasing or whatever? So that's kind of the debate. 
there's some unknowns. We don't know how much state aid we're going to be getting. Uh, the, at the last meeting, the, 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 the school committee threw out the need to <clears throat> for additional funds to for contract negotiations to bump up teacher salaries to be competitive with the town manager 12. That led to a discussion about well, how what's that impact on the addition on, on other salary negotiations for the town employees. <clears throat> and then all through all, all of that, I have yet to hear anyone talk about the solid waste issue that we'll have to deal with in, in two years. Oh, Madam, one year. Madam Chair, what's the town manager 12? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to pick up stuff that like cultural knowledge that not everybody might know. Town manager 12 is the 12 communities that the our town manager has uh, typically compared us to and used us as a comparison. And I will buy a drink for anyone who can sit here right now and name all 12 of them. <laughs> I can't name all 12, but I can tell you where you can find them. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you can find them by going to the uh, financial information page and looking at the town manager's financial information. It's like a financial budget statement that is this fancy document that has all kinds of information about departments in it and so on and so forth. And he starts out with a lot of statistical charts at the beginning. And one of those shows you who the 12 are and does some raw comparisons of us on some areas of spending and taxation. In, in, in theory, there are peer communities by which we can judge how well we're doing or how yes. well we're doing. In theory. And uh, the reason that I say that 12 may change is that this was 12 chosen by uh, former town manager at Jeffrey, and a new town manager may decide to hand it to other communities. So, I, there, there is uh, question. <laughs> so, what is the solid waste issue? We have a solid waste contract that we just entered. We're in the second year of a three year contract. So we're going to have to, if we're not already new, looking into new contract, which will be much more expensive than what we're paying right now. Um, and maybe more limited in what services we're going to get. Um, and like the last override, there was, there was no Nothing, there's no um, consideration of the solid waste issue in the last override. And it seems like that's going to be the case here, but I, I, I don't know how long we can, we can keep that can. Because I think that might be a, uh, a bomb way to go off soon for us. So uh, interesting, interesting time. Um, I can't remember on him or the next long range planning committee meeting is. No. Sometimes in the next two weeks. Sometimes it can. Sometimes if we're on long range vacation. Yeah, for that one, the government's budget comes in. February 17th. Oh, all right. In the middle of my vacation. So we will um, report back to the committee after the next long range planning committee meeting on the 17th. Uh, next on reports um, is the capital planning committee. Daryl, anything you want to talk to us about? Um, okay. Daryl is our liaison, finance committee with committee's liaison to the capital planning committee. Following, trying to follow in Charlie's footsteps, although his imprint on the capital planning committee will figure out mine. Um, so there's there's a capital planning committee of about um, I think it's about eight or nine members. Uh, the chair is a guy named Timor Yontar, who also happens to be um, uh, run the capital planning program for the state. So um, we're very fortunate to, to have him. Um, so we have a pool of about eight to nine million dollars a year. Um, that's used for primarily for uh, purchase or significant improvement of, of um, significant assets. So this is things that are outside the, um, the standard operating budget. Um, and it's things like buildings, building significant repairs, um, police cruisers, fire engines, um, uh, 
public works uh, trucks, um, big investments, and in, obviously in the, in the high school and the DPW building. Um, so as with, with everything to do with public funding, there's way more in demand uh, than there is uh, available funds. Um, so we go through a process that starts um, generally in September and is about to wrap up um, to you know, figure out how we can best uh, take the um, capital resources we have uh, to do the most good. So um, the uh, Capital Planning Committee will be coming before the FinCom uh, on February uh, 20, not February 27th. Mm -hmm. um, their, their presentation will take up most of the meeting um, and they'll walk through the plan um, pretty much in depth, explain far better than I have um, you know, how sources of capital funds, how they get used, how they get sort of husbanded through the whole process over a multi, over a five year, generally a five year uh, time horizon. And um, if you have any questions, um, I expect since we're reviewing the third draft of the report uh, later this week, I expect it's pretty close to being finalized, so we should be able to get it to the um, finance committee well before the 27th, I don't know exactly when. But uh, if after you've had a chance to look at the report, you have any questions, um, you can direct them to me. And obviously, the presentation itself will reserve, reserve time for QA. So. Thanks, Doug. Thank you. Any other reports from any groups that missed or looked? Carolyn, can you new class for last year for those who have to look at it? What's that? I can um, have us go over the reclassifications that happened last year for those who are in charge of departments that have a reclassification. All right. Oh, sure. Okay. All right. Um, raise your hand if you have one of the following budgets planning and community development. Council on Aging, Facilities, EPW, yeah. HR, Treasurer, IT, Health and Human Services, including Youth Consulting Center, <laughs> and, that's, and libraries and recreation. So take, you know, take, if you know who you are, take one and um, pass them along. I know this is old school, it's paper. You have three pages in front of you, or you will. Um, those of you who are new, look along next to someone. Don't worry, we'll go over this when this year's happens. Um, forget whether or not you're in a department. Let me know. I'll, I'll tell you where they are again. The three pages. So what happens in a town is that people get a job and have a classification. Classifications are in the very back of the this year's budget. They start on page 201. And there are funny letters and numbers. And if you have questions figuring out what the heck the letters and numbers stand for, you can see me because I've been doing this in the past. Um, and what happens is if somebody's job they feel has changed significantly, then they can request a reclassification of their job numbers and letters. And they go through their manager and they present to HR and HR makes a decision. Last year, 19, 17 people applied, um, nine were denied, and those nine, seven appealed. And when they appeal, it involves an outside um, consulting firm, that um, HR consulting group that does that. There are usually other HR town managers. And eight, um, of those nine that appealed, um, none of them were approved. I mean, of the seven that appealed, none of them were approved. So eight of the reclassifications from the, of the seven, of 17 were accepted last year. And what happens is you get this crazy mashup of, by reclassifying the following positions, and you'll see A through J, and sometimes there's a reclass that occurs without being asked. That's a whole nother topic. Um, and you either are going to find that it's by adding a following position, which is the number two on the second page, 
or by the and or by deleting the following position, which is on the third page. And what you should be able to do is anytime you see your department name underneath one of the letters, then try to match that up with this year's budget on your HR page for your budget. And what you want to see is that the change did occur. That there is an, either an, an increase in salary and a change in number and often a change in title. Um, if it hasn't happened, let me know because and you need to let the Allen know and the town manager or the assistant town manager so that they can update the, the budget. Um, and it'll also explain why somebody's salary may have gone up ex exponentially you know, or, or even just substantially. Um, if the FTE is 0 0.8571, like this recycling coordinator, it's because they don't quite work full time. Um, but for the most part, you'll see an FTE of one. Um, and email me or catch me at the next meeting and I can help you figure that stuff out. And that's it for me. Any questions? For now. Yeah. It's okay if, make, if, if what I just said makes absolutely no sense. Don't worry. <laughs> Take what Carolyn handed out, look at your budgets, and then come back on Wednesday with, with questions. Thanks, Carolyn. Yeah. Could you send that? Yes. Everyone? Yeah, thank you. All right. Um, let's look at the minutes of June 22nd and approve those. Okay. While I'm pulling that up, um, I just heard from the IT department that they're going to be upgrading us to Microsoft Outlook instead of the M Damon system sometime in the next couple of weeks. So just uh, just a heads up for everyone. Um, okay, so um, really quick, uh, I have the minutes up here. They were distributed um, by email. Um, and I just wanted to ask before we review this, if anyone can confirm the name of the fund that we approved a motion to transfer from the reserve from to during the end of year transfers. Yes, we we voted to move two hundred thousand to the fire department and ten thousand dollars to the town managers. Okay, budget. Okay, for a total of two hundred and ten thousand. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, you said to the fire department, and then you said the town manager, town manager department, town manager department. Okay, mm -hmm. thanks. Let me know if anyone wants to see a specific area here. Anybody have any questions, revisions, minutes of mm -hmm. June 22nd, 2020, 2022? With revisions that the amendment that we just did. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes of June 22nd? So moved. Second. Second. All right. Um, all right. All in favor, say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? All right. The minutes of June 22nd, 2022 have been approved in the minutes. Um, um, okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, anybody have any budgets ready? I was hoping. <laughs> I was hoping some of the small ones. Okay, this close to having the library ready to go, Chris. But we have to All right. Um, Annie, you will um, check with Minuteman and get yes. Let us know I when we can get a date. And I, I, I can predict that we will have all the health and human services in the areas in Rec and Rink and all the all that stuff by next Monday. And I have, I'm hoping the library is going to be scheduled soon enough to do it next week as well. And Daryl, you're still thinking the police department budget will be ready next week? Monday. Monday. 
We're meeting with fire employees um, Wednesday. Great. Yeah. David? I think we can do one budget tonight. Cool. Page oh. mm -hmm. 17. It's called the Finance Committee budget. <laughs> <laughs> It's just um, the budget primarily stays the same with the, with the exceptions as the salary adjustment. This is our budget that oh, budget. takes care of uh, tariff stipends. Uh, stipends and also the um, Salary for the uh, executive secretary. And coverage expenses that we may incur. Anybody have any questions on the finance committee budget? Yeah. One general question. Sure. That comes up a lot. So in the finance committee spreadsheet. Um, in the first few columns, you have FTA, DU grade, and then step, and then step again. So the two columns same step there. And what is the difference between them? This is a general question. Come up and step and longevity cover? No, I mean, the two steps. No, step step. By 24, oh. there's two columns both named step. I actually think it's a typo. Yeah. yeah. Could you? No, it's a, no, it's a, I think that I think it's um, if you look on another department, it's a it's for um, mid steps versus full steps. Yeah, it's called S step in another department. Uh, yeah. Some people step in a full, oh, for a full year, and some people step for part year. Like some departments, S step, and others it's just step. This is what happens when the person manually types the whole document. I guess that was part of the type of. Yeah. Yeah, yeah looks like it. Yeah, it's good. The other ones. Well, you know, there are budgets where there are two steps and there are two different numbers. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Oh, because they would have been at one step part of the year and one step. Uh, I, I, I think that's what, you know, oh, okay. as Charlie describes it. I think you need to dive deeper to say exactly when that's the increase oh. comes in. Oh, I wonder if this relates to the contract. Charlie. Well, on the Finance Committee budget, um, how, how do we do on our expenses last year versus the uh, budget? We were under. I mean, probably get an exact number on that later. <clears throat> Some IT things like an owl or whatever they did not need to buy. Thank you. Any other questions on the finance committee budget? Are you making a motion? Yes. Um, I'll make a motion that we accept uh, as printed in the budget book for the finance committee for 11848 Second. All right. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion, questions? All right. All in favor of approving the finance committee budget, say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? It's unanimous. Highest committee budget has been approved. Thank you for having the budget. <laughs> One down. One down. One down. One down. <laughs>
A um, couple of other things um, on my list, on my agenda. Um, I don't know, uh, I think you all received the uh, email from Sandy Fuller that we now have a new deputy town manager for finance, um, finance director, Alex McGee. Um, it's good news and the bad news is Phyllis Marshall, our treasurer, is retired. So um, it will be a good question to ask the town manager uh, what the plan is for replacing. Her. Uh, and speaking of the town manager, he will, we, will, we are meeting by a Zoom on Wednesday night, and much of the meeting will be taken up by the town manager's presentation to us. So come with lots of questions. Um, one more thing I want to say, um, and we say this every year, um, and uh, regarding up, what, the upcoming town elections, um, whether it's an override or not, we will have uh, town elections, and it's been the policy of the Finance Committee to stay out of any um, uh, electioneering on behalf of any particular candidate for a town position. You can, you can. Um, Campaign are you like for statewide um, candidates or referendum, but when it comes down to local um, politics, we really want to stay above the fray and keep um, uh, maintain the appearance of neutrality. Um, and in terms of the override committee, finance committee itself will take a vote whether to support or not an override. So we will. Uh, that on on our uh, plate, uh, Annie. But with regards to the override, regardless of how the committee votes, we are allowed to individually take a position on that and, and work or not work on a campaign for it. Correct. Yep. yep. But we so, the finance committee will take a, a position. Right. But as and, individual citizens, we can. Do the and the, and the vote will be recorded. Twenty four. Yes. Zero against, or hopefully not. Yep. Eleven for and ten against. Yep. Hopefully, there will be a consensus, a strong consensus. It's always somewhere in between those two. Um, <laughs> could be, could be, um, but for obvious reasons, we we really do want to seem completely impartial mm -hmm. when we stand up and give our recommendations to town, and we really want them to see us as just having the town's finances uh, at heart and them or it town meeting at heart. So, so just remember that as we go forward um, this spring. Um, and that is um, pretty much all that I have. Um, again, we'll have the town manager um, meeting with us by Zoom on Wednesday. Maybe we'll have some more budgets done. Um, I'm hoping. Um, certainly, we should get into the big swing of approving budgets the following week. Um, and uh, and that's it. What does anybody have anything else? Uh, yes, Christine. Uh, what's what's the plan on meetings in person versus uh, Zoom or versus hybrid? Good question. Uh, my plan is for the rest of February to be meeting uh, by Zoom. That will, um, I think, accommodate the most number of people. Um, there is still a concern about COVID as well, and I. Um, so that's what the decision I've made. I would have met in person on Wednesday, but we don't didn't have a room available. Um, I wanted to have the first two meetings in person, but that uh, that didn't ha couldn't happen. Um, so we're meeting by Zoom throughout all of at least most of February. I'm reserving the option to meet start meeting again in person towards the end of February, and, and hopefully in March will be my. My goal is that we'll all come back together 
Um, um, but we'll see what COVID does. Is everyone comfortable with that? Mm -hmm. Gordon? I have three quick things. Um, so um, you're, not, you're not doing, I noticed last year you were on acting and you're not doing that this year or did I do something? I tried to find it. They are actively recording us right now. Did, but are they broadcasting or just recording? Just recording. Okay, that's the They weren't broadcasting last year either though. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. I just went to where I was talking. Um, the second thing was, um, it might be interesting to see the impact of the textile waistband on the tonnage, because that can be a substantial amount publicized. And the last thing is, does Long Range Planning Committee have agendas and edits? Because I don't see them online. There's a very broad, big agenda. Uh, we will be talking about the Long Range Plan. Um, and minutes, I have not seen any minutes. Well, I just think that that is something that should be. So there's, there's, I believe there are no minutes because there are no votes. Yeah. 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 It's possible that something should be considered, but it would be a question for this one. Thank you for the um, question regarding textiles. Does the BPW subcommittee that have that information? Let's put that on your list. Pardon? That could be all as much as a thousand times to do that. So, BPW. We're on it. Yep. <laughs> it's on my mind. Uh, so I wish that we weren't ending at 8 30. Um, I want to be more productive, but there's absolutely nothing further for us to do at this point. So I think we'll just call it a night and hopefully, uh, from here on, we'll be going straight until 10 o'clock every night to belt out our budgets and get our work done. So, um, Madam Chairman. Uh, yes. Are we going to get copies of the five-year plan uh, before Wednesday? As opposed, something other than what the town manager has in his book. Um. Yeah. If there's any updates on it, or yeah. I'll see if there's any updates. Okay, but it's basically what's in the budget. That's what I'm understanding. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And then, so you mentioned, mentioned sorry, just a quick question. You mentioned a deadline to for people to get comments to each other. I'm very deadline presenter. What would that be? I'm sorry. Sorry, if we have, have questions, we have comments for other people's budgets. Well, I would I would say that I am meeting with uh, or the fact that I am meeting with Christine from Toronto on Thursday and with Joe Connell who's recommending on Wednesday morning. So if you have questions about those budgets, you have a couple of days to review those budgets and get us any questions. We, we did notice a lot of things that are different in those budgets that I think have with moving things to the facilities department and some art positions and so on and so forth. Those are already on our radar. But if you go through it with a fine tooth comb and you have anything you're concerned about, send me an email. Uh, my plan is to get some questions, questions both of them in advance tomorrow based on Rebecca's notes and my notes. That will be sort of general questions that I hope will always have all the answers, but do something specific. Let me know, and even if I don't get it until Wednesday morning, um, I will leave it into the conversation. Does that help? Yeah. Well, the other thing is, when they present, you can ask as many questions yeah, as yeah. you want. Yeah, yes. You know, yes. and sure. yeah, the whole part. We'll see. We'll see how well Rebecca and I guess at what the questions are that you would have asked if you had time to look at the budget, <laughs> so that you don't have to go back to Christine and ask again. And and most important questions may be just just generally, you know, what. How is that program going with the library? Is it, yeah. is, it, is, it, is, it, is it successful? Is it not successful? That money for that program is, how is that working? What's, what, is there a plan for this? Um, those are the type of questions that these, all of our subcommittees should be thinking about anyway, but just in case, if, if you really, um, if you're really interested 
get those questions before or as soon as possible so that people can prepare. Like, um, where is the it is where is the town in terms of its um, tree program? Is it are we falling behind or are we are we on on par with the tree plan? Um, those are the type of questions that if you have them, get them to the committee, subcommittees, so that they can talk to their department head and, and, and get the answers yeah. for you. Yeah. It, it's also an opportunity to answer the questions that may come up if you do look at the town manager's budget statement that includes sort of, you know, the goals and accomplishments of the, the department and all that kind of stuff. There may be some questions that get sparked by that. I, I try to tread a little lightly on those questions because I don't want them to feel like I'm trying to manage them, but um, it is the one shot that we get to get some answers to that kind of thing. So. Carolyn? Then the other thing that I've done in the past is you keep good notes about what they said they were going to do in the next year so that when you come back the following year, you can ask, them, how did that program go? <laughs> Did you spend that money there? And there have been times when it was like, wait, are you going to do what? <laughs> and the most important thing is to do your budget. Mm -hmm. so yes. To really look at your budget, meet with your department head, ask the questions, understand your budget, um, and be able to, to, to explain what's happening in that budget to the rest of us so that we can vote to approve it or not. And again, if you have any questions, talk to uh, me or Daryl or Annie or Alan. We're here to help. And of course, Tara is the goddess of everything operationally in terms of Email, SharePoint, getting, you know, if you have a, make sure you have the Zoom invite, all things like that. Right. She who has the answers. She has the answers. <laughs> all right. So is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All, right. all in favor? Aye. 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 So see you all by Zoom <coughs> on Wednesday night. Okay. 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 Okay.